Blast me to Electia! It's time for the Mad Merlin's Warhammer 40,000 Imperium Journey. Issue 59, Rules and Battle Report. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mad Merlin's Warhammer 40,000 Imperium Journey. So we're moving on with issue 59 and we're finishing 59 as we are covering the new rules as well as our battle report for this issue. So before I get started, Today's question is, would you be interested in seeing more of my, me face-to-face, -face, just discussing hobby, uh, maybe releases, etc.? Give me your answers in the comment section down below. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe, as it will help the channel greatly grow. So, another side note before we do dive in next video after this will be a paint video for the outriders i've had a few people interested in it so i've set one aside and i'm going to paint that one for you on camera after the last um rather failed live stream which is not probably going to be released i am going to not live stream but just straight up record and Hopefully do a better job than the previous video. So, without further ado then, let's dive into 59's brand new rules. So, we'll open up to our rules. And here we are. So, first off, we have our Space Marine Stratagems. So, we've got our four of the Stratagems. That we're getting for our space marines these might be the only ones that we're going to get because it doesn't say part one or two like it has done on the ultramarines rules which is the next issue but either way we've got um some nice stratagems here to use so we've got honor the chapter which is for an assault intercessor squad whilst they are in within engagement range of an enemy they can fight so Basically, give them a second chance to fight in a combat end of combat phase. Transhuman physiology, which is a nice protective one, use this when the primaris unit is selected as an attack target until the end of the phase. Attacks against this unit cannot be uh, wounded on a one, two, or three. So, depending on the size of the unit, it will cost more command points. So, five or fewer is one command point, otherwise two. That's a nice one that helps reduce the damage that you're going to be taking from incoming attacks, especially the do um, Necron Overlord Scythe. Hit and Run Warfare, which is a bike, land speed, or storm speeder, so it allows you to shoot in a turn which they felt fall back. And Gene Wart Might, so use a stratagem when a Primaris unit from your army is selected to fight until the end of the phase. Each time the model in the unit makes a melee attack, an unmodified hit of six automatically wounds. So we yeah, a nice little bit of extra damage punching, especially if you face something a little too tough for chainsaws to deal with. And on the back, we got a tutorial? tutorial on transhuman physiology and also on the chapter. And moving on then, we've got a new advanced stage which is all about building our army and learning about power ratings. So we're going to be starting to use power ratings in our games from this issue onwards. So it covers what power ratings are, which is basically a point system. I think it goes from most of the stuff we're going to have is definitely less than 10. But it's a a uh, rating system on how good that unit is on the tabletop to quickly gather an army together without worrying about points, etc. Um, there's information about using understrength units, the maximum power level you can go to, and some hints and tips for using your power levels. We'll also be starting to learn about battlefield roles, so when forging our armies we can have a Certain amount of HQ, certain amount of troops, elites, heavy support, fast attack, and lords of war. So each data sheet, as shows here, 
as its power rating and its battlefield role. So our assault intercessors have a five power rating and our troops, while our lieutenant here has a four power rating, but is a HQ. So well, what's left then is to go into our mission. So your prelude to doom is our next initiate mission. And we're coming to the end of our initiate pack. And we've got an example here on how to build your army. So for this mission, you will have up to 25 power. You must choose one or two HQs, at least one H one troops, and then any amount of extras. And then again, you've got no more than 25 power. We've given you a few example lists here. We got a um, cryptic heavy list here with plasmancer, technomancer, five immortals, two swords of free scarabs, a spider, and two wraiths. We've got an overlord, ten warriors, ten warriors, two tomb blades, and five flayed ones. We got a combined list here with tech priest dominus, canoness, cataphron destroyers, repentia, superior repentia, and free aggressors. And then we got a pure Primaris list, which is actually the list I'm going to be taking because I am quite enjoying using my Space Marines at the moment. They are working out quite well for me. So, before we move into the battle, I'll introduce you to the two armies that I'll be using. So, here we have the two units, two units, two armies that I am using for this 25 power battle. So leading the Ultramarines, we've got the Captain and his ever-faithful Lieutenant, two squads of five Assault Intercessors, and then the three Aggressors. So that is, like I said, the example army list that is pure Ultramarines. It also gives me a chance to use the Ultramarine Stratagems, which if I had gone for a combined force, I'd still been able to use anyway. But this does give me a much wider selection of units to use them on. For the Necrons, I've gone for a kind of a mix match. I've got a Overlord as my uh, Warlord. I've gone for the Chronomancer. I kind of like using him. Two Wraiths, because we didn't get to see them last time. Ten Warriors and five Immortals forming the backbone of the army. So, these are both lists maxed out to 25 power. And both fairly... Um, I say evenish, but we'll see just how even those uh, armies are on the battlefield. So I'm going to set up and I'll be right back. Okay, battlefield set up and both armies are deployed. So each side has put a unit into strategic reserve. We've got the wraiths as they're pretty fragile and the aggressors because they're slow. It's not their fault they ate too much. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, we have deployed pretty evenly. The assault intercessors are split, ready to go in different directions for controlling objectives. Captain and Lieutenant are there to support. Over yonder, the Necrons are deployed to the Chronomancer, backing up the Warriors, giving them that 5 plus invuln save. And the Overlord is there giving plenty of movement boosts to both units with the Immortals on the flank. I've given each side three command points just so we can start getting some stratagems in, especially now we've got those Ultramarine ones. And I've also put three victory markers as the uh, victory conditions is to perform a action three times from the attackers. So I'll put down one marker each time I've completed the action. And once the third one is completed, it's victory for the Necrons. The Ultramarines just have to hold out for the full five turns. So, without further ado, here is this week's dramatic reading. Prelude to Doom Despite the heroic efforts of the Adeptus Sororitas, the Basilica of St. Marcius is now utterly surrounded. Necron forces have breached the walls in several locations and are now pressing towards the central keep. 
Imperial reinforcements continue to stream towards the Shrine Moon, but seem certain to arrive too late to affect the outcome of the battle. The Imperium must rely on the few remaining defenders to hold its inner sanctum. Necrons War of Attrition The Necron Royal Court is finally united. Nobles, cryptex and lesser officers march alongside their troops, directing fire and opening further breaches in the Basilica's walls. They must seize ground, slay as many defenders as possible, and drive the remaining humans deeper into the Basilica's shrine complex. Space Marines, the besieged. The Imperial commanders rush to rally their troops to repel the Necron assault. The inner courtyards and cloisters of the Basilica of St. Martius have been prepared with barricades, whilst destroyed structures have been fortified and secured. The Necrons will not seize these positions easily. Alright, with both forces deployed, our objective set. Time to roll off for first turn. That was close, but the Ultramarine sees it with a two. So moving into the first battle round for the Necrons, I have Protocol of the Vengeful Stars active. And I will be going for the Extra Arm Penetration Directive. So, here we go then. With the Ultramarines Turn 1. End of Ultramarines Turn 1, and we've just moved up. The forces split in two different directions, trying to cover the objectives as best they can. The aggressors are still circling the battlefield, awaiting to come in from a strategic reserve. So let's see what happens with Necrons Turn 1. End of Necron Turn 1, and the Warriors have dealt a severe blow to the Swallow of Intercessors there, killing two of their number. But no um, objectives have been activated yet, so there's still everything to play for. And we're moving on to Ultramarines Turn 2. And for this battle round, my command, Derek, my protocol is Protocol of the Sudden Storm. And I'm going to use the second directive. So if I am performing an action, I can still make attacks with ranged weapons without failing that action. So here we go then. End of the Space Marines turn. And the three assault intercessors plus the captain managed to charge in. Captain did need a command reroll, but they managed to get in and they managed to chop up five of those Necron warriors. Only one managed to reanimate, but they did finish off one with shooting before they got into the fight. The other squad of intercessors on the left hand are still sneaking around behind as we are lacking the infiltrators at the moment. But moving on then, it is time for Necrons turn two, and it'll be time for them to fight back. End of Necron turn two, and we are holding up the Ultramarines in the center there still. The Chronometron has actually been working out really well, getting me that five up in Vaughn. Meanwhile over here, the Immortals have shredded away two intercessors and almost wounded the captain but they need a morale test they'll probably pass yes so on to ultramarines then turn three and for this battle round the necrons command protocol is the undying legions And I think I'll go for reanimation protocol rerolls. I can reroll. Uh, I can reroll one dice, so that'll be handy if I get any twos. So here we are then for Imperium turn three. 
Whew, that was a hectic ultramarine turn. But we have wiped out the warriors in the middle there, and we've also wiped out the immortals. Thanks to trans transhuman physiology, the overlord failed to wound my intercessors. So they are able to stand and fight next turn. Uh, the aggressors, even with a command reroll, failed to make the charge into the wraiths, so the wraiths are still unhindered. And they are ready to either go to make the objective or to chop up the uh, aggressors, but I think the objective is the safer option there. Um, it's turn three, and I don't think there's going to be enough chance for the Necrons to claim victory. Because the Overlord's going to have to go through the Intercessors and the Lieutenant, and that poor little Chronomancer over there is not going to survive the Captain and the Assault Intercessors. But we'll play next turn anyway, see what happens. But before next turn, we have Necrons turn three, so let's have a go with that. End of Necron turn three. And the Wraiths have moved and started the action and will score it in the next command phase if they're still alive. Over here, the Chronomancer chose the lesser of two evils and went into combat against the Lieutenant, although he took two wounds. It's better than facing the Captain and the Assault Intercessors. The Overlord finally managed to do some damage even with transhuman physiology. Um... The Overlord killed two of the Assault Intercessors with the Scythe. So it's just the Captain uh, Sergeant left there to fight off the Overlord. They did manage to do two wounds before getting taken down. So he has a bit of damage, but they will heal one each turn. So then it moves to Ultramarine's turn four. And... There's not going to be much chance for the Necrons to claim victory. But for this battle round, Protocol the Eternal Guardian is in effect. And I'll go with the second directive, I think. Which gives me um, better reactions against... Um, Charges made against objectives, but that's kind of redundant really at the moment. Might be useful for the wraiths. Just depends on if the aggressors can actually make it into combat with them. So, here we go then with the Ultramarines' fourth turn. There we go, end of Ultramarines' turn four, and the aggressors have pun swung the deciding punch. Captain managed to make a nice 10 inch charge, but the assault intercessors in front of him couldn't make a 7 inch charge. The aggressors made their 8 inch charge with a nice 10, and the captain gave them the honour to punch the last wraith to death. Managed to burn up the first wraith with their flamestorm gauntlets, and even putting one wound on the. Uh, two wounds on the other wraith as well. But it was, again, down to the Fists to finish everything off. And there's not much hope for the Necrons to score their objective within the next two rounds. So it's going to be a Imperium victory. Well done, Imperium. So what I'll do is I'll bring everything back in. We'll give you a rundown on the events of the battle and we'll see what's in our next Imperium. So there we have Battle 59, which from Imperium, that was our second to last initiate pack mission. We have one more to go, which is a really big battle. So I'm gonna need to push my table to one side and set up as much as I can on the floor. And it's going to be a proper slobber knocker. We're going to have the Outriders to try out, so that'll be nice. And we're going to be using a good amount of everything that we have, so it's going to be a lot for me to try and remember. But how did the battle go? I think it went pretty well. The Ultramarines taking first turn and making use of that first turn. 
getting themselves into positions where they could um, delay the enemy and then charge into the fight was pretty beneficial. I think if Necrons had turn one, it might have been a different game. I probably would have preferred it. My strategy was a little bit more reliant on us getting first turn and also being in a better position. I was overestimating my moves a lot, so really I should have put a lot of those um, uh, command protocols later on in the turn order. Um, but as it was, we just didn't have the numbers. I think maybe next time around, drop the Immortals and the Wraiths, take 10 more Warriors. And possibly flayed ones, because that gives me the option to teleport right on top of an objective that would otherwise be out of my range. But I just wanted to show off the Wraiths. They didn't actually do much, sadly. They tried to make the objective, but they just um, couldn't quite survive the fists from the aggressors. So, yeah, definitely, I think the list would have been a bit, bit better tweaked and made different for the Necrons. But other than that, I think everything went fairly well. The Ultramarines, I think maybe a um, Squad of Battle Sisters wouldn't have been too bad giving me a few more bodies on the floor but i'd have to have dropped the aggressors in the place of those and i think really the aggressors have a little bit more staying power they got the higher toughness higher uh not higher armor but um they can definitely dish out a bit more damage in combat with their fists so yeah definitely worth a replay at some point i think it was a fun mission. I think the terrain layout worked pretty well. It was pretty evenly spaced. Gave each side a good position to run along for defense and then charge into the fray. But definitely we could have done with a little bit more bodies on the Necron side. The Chronomancer worked pretty well actually. I'm definitely enjoying using him. I can't wait to use him again in the next battle. The 5-up Invuln on Warriors is actually pretty um, pretty uh, good. Um, I think added in with the Reanimator as well, that could make those Warriors really hard to shift. A 5-up um, Invuln and a 4-up Reanimate with rerolling ones is going to be a hard unit to shift off the battlefield. I'm definitely going to be looking forward to fielding a big unit of 20 warriors. So that's going to be fun for the next battle. But speaking of nexts, what is in our next Imperium? It's going to be no surprise really. It's the second half of our Outriders. So we get our Outriders, we have uh, brand new Space Marine rules, so we get the first part of the Angels of Death rules. And we have our last stand on Electia, and we also paint the Outriders as well. So we also get the battle uh, uh, data sheet for these guys, so definitely looking forward to using them in the battle. Issue 61 then, we have our Necron Tomb Blade. We have rules to upgrade our Necrons and our Battle Sister characters. And we also start our brand new mission pack, the Veteran Mission Pack. So, some good stuff to come. But that is it for me. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for watching. Of course, don't forget to answer the question of the video, which is at the, begin the beginning. And don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. It helps the channel out. There's, of course, also all my links down in the description below. And all that's left for me to do, say is thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time for more mad content. Goodbye.